Okay, in this example, uh, we're given a function g uh, that's defined by this uh, formula, 12x divided by 4x minus 2. And we want to answer some questions about the domain of this function. Um, so recall the domain of a function is the set of all uh, numbers that um, uh, when you use these numbers as input uh, values uh, to the function, uh, you'll get meaningful matching output values. So what do we mean by a meaningful matching output value? Um, well, in this example, uh, because we don't know how this function g is going to be applied in practice, uh, a meaning, and we don't know what the um, uh, input quantity is measuring, and we don't know what the output quantity is measuring, uh, then a meaningful output value is just a real number output value. So any number that we can uh, input to this function that will give us a uh, real number output, uh, real number matching output, that would be an element uh, in the domain of the function. All right, so let's first check uh, uh, to see if zero uh, is in the domain of this function. So we're going to use zero as input to the function, and we're going to check to see if the matching output value is meaningful. In other words, if it's a real number. All right, so let's just try evaluating uh, g of zero. All right, so to evaluate g of zero, recall you're just going to uh, substitute zero uh, for the input variable uh, in the formula that defines the function. So we have 12 times zero in the numerator uh, divided by four times zero minus two. So that's gonna give us 12 times zero in the numerator is zero. Uh, four times zero is zero minus two. And of course, uh, zero minus two is going to be minus two. So we get zero divided by minus two and remember that reduces to uh, zero. Ah, so g of zero, uh, its matching output turns out to be uh, zero itself. <clears throat> but zero is a real number, so zero, that input, gives a real number matching output value, and so that tells us zero is in the domain. So to the answer to this question is uh, yes. All right, on the other hand here, let's check to see if the number one half uh, is in the domain. So we go through exactly the same procedure. We're simply going to use one half as input to the function g, and we want to check to see if its matching output value uh, is a real number. All right, so I'm going to substitute one half for the input variable x in the formula that defines the function. So we have 12 times uh, one half in the numerator of this formula, and then in the denominator we'll have four times one half and then uh, minus two. So this is a fairly easy expression to simplify. 12 times 1 half is going to be 6. So we end up with 6 in the numerator. 4 times 1 half is 2. So in the denominator, we end up with 2 minus 2. And of course, um, that's going to be 0. So we end up here with 6 divided by 0, which is not a real number. Okay. So remember, whenever you divide by 0, uh, the result is undefined. It's not a real number. Ah, so that tells us that 1 half is not in the domain of this function because its matching output value is not um, a real number. So uh, the answer to our second question here is no. So finally, uh, let's think about the more general question. Um, we know zero is in the domain of the function. And we know one half is not in the domain of the function. So what would be the entire domain of the function? Remember, the domain of a function is a set of numbers. It's not just a single number. So let's see if we can think about what uh, the entire domain um, of the function g is. Well, it's pretty easy to see, uh, considering uh, part b here, what went wrong, right? When we tried to use 1 half as input, we ended up dividing by 0. And when we divide by 0, we don't get a real number. So <clears throat> the question we need to ask ourselves is, well, what inputs here uh, in this formula are going to cause us to divide by 0? Those numbers cannot be in the domain of the function. So we know one of those is 1 half, right? Because that causes us to divide by 0. Is 1 half the only number uh, so that when we input it to this function formula, uh, we'll end up dividing by 0? Well, um, we can think about that and uh, uh, try to uh, uh, arrive at an answer by inspection. But we can also uh, answer that question systematically as follows. All, right? all we have to do is take the denominator um, of our function formula, 4x minus 2. Uh, set that equal to zero and solve the resulting equation. And that will tell us all values for x. Um, 
uh, that would result in zero if we use them uh, as input uh, to this function. So let's try solving this equation uh, for x. So this is a simple equation to solve. I'm simply going to add 2 to both sides of the equation. So I end up here with 4x is equal to 2. And then just divide both sides by 4 to isolate x on the left-hand side of the equation. So we end up here with x is 2 divided by 4, which reduces to 1 half. Ah, so that tells us that uh, uh, if we use 1 half uh, as input to this function, that the denominator is going to end up being 0. And so the matching output will not be a real number. And in fact, uh, since 1 half is the only solution to this equation, uh, that's the only number that's going to make the denominator 0, then that's the only number that we have to exclude from the domain of the function g. So the entire domain of the function g would be uh, the set of all numbers except for uh, 1 half. And um, one way to write that is just simply write it in words. There are other ways, uh, symbolic ways, that we can express this same set uh, that we'll learn about later. Uh, but for the time being, um, we'll just verbally say that the domain of our function g is all real numbers except um, that bad value 1 half.